If you're having chest pain, arm, shoulder, neck pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, stop watching and call 911 immediately. If you're feeling good, keep watching. So let's clear up the confusion. A heart attack is also known as a myocardial infarction. A heart attack happens when there is not enough blood flow going to the heart muscle. When your heart muscle is not getting enough blood flow, it can even die off. And that is what a heart attack is. There are various reasons why not enough blood flow is getting to your heart muscle. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, sorry, will you sit? Oh, oh yeah, 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 thanks. <laughs> Got slouchy. <laughs> your heart has three main arteries, and those arteries bring blood flow to your heart. Those arteries are called the coronary arteries. These arteries can become blocked over the course of many years. Those blockages are called atherosclerosis or atherosclerotic plaques. The first type of heart attack is where there's a lot of atherosclerotic buildup inside the arteries of your heart. Once this plaque starts building up and building up and building up, it's prone to rupturing and creating a big blood clot that blocks off all the flow down that artery. And that's the most dangerous one. A type two heart attack has more to do with a supply demand issue. If the demand of blood flow to that heart muscle exceeds the supply of blood flow getting down to that heart muscle, that's a type two heart attack. This can be due to many different reasons including extra stress on the heart that can be caused by viral infections, pneumonia, any type of infection in the body, a systemic infection called sepsis, even an abnormal heart rhythm that causes your heart to pump less efficiently, COVID-19, any of these things that decrease the blood supply, cocaine. Really? Yeah. Wow. Cocaine vasoconstricts the heart arteries. Cocaine bad. <laughs> drugs are bad, don't do drugs. So a type one heart attack and a type two heart attack may present with the same symptoms, such as chest pain or shortness of breath, but they might be treated a little bit differently. Hang on, we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's important to remember if you're feeling different than you usually are and you're not feeling well, seek medical attention. A heart attack might not necessarily be chest pain. The most common symptoms that one can get during a heart attack are chest pain, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, a sudden weakness or fatigue, syncope or passing out, pain in one or both arms, more so on the left side, jaw pain, abdominal pain, the feeling of anxiety or impending doom, even sweating or nausea. So a lot of these symptoms that we've deemed classic are actually classic for men. Oh, amazing. Uh, not amazing, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Females can present with different symptoms during a heart attack. And these symptoms we'll discuss now. So chest pain for men, that's actually often described as a heavy weight on the chest, the feeling of an elephant sitting on your chest that radiates to one arm or both arms. Chest pain for women, if they have chest pain, is more often described as like a tightness in the chest. Sometimes they'll have abdominal pain with a vague nausea. First and foremost, call 911 immediately the moment that you suspect a heart attack. The emergency medical professional will send help right away and they'll talk you through anything that you need, including taking certain medications, what you should be doing at that time. Once a heart attack is diagnosed in the ER, a test that can be done is an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. And that helps to see if one of your walls of the heart is compromised and is weaker than another. And that might aid in the diagnosis of a heart attack. Another test that will be done is a blood test called the troponin blood test. That's a cardiac biomarker to see if any protein has been leaked from the heart muscle that would suggest a heart attack. Once a heart attack is diagnosed in the ER, the patient will be rushed to the cardiac catheterization lab and a cardiac catheterization will be performed to see if that person has a blocked artery. It is imperative to open up that blockage immediately to restore blood flow to the heart muscle. That's the only way to fix a heart attack. During a cardiac catheterization, a blockage can be opened up with a balloon that's called angioplasty. After that's performed, 
a stent will be placed and then blood flow will be restored to the heart muscle. When we're talking about, when we're talking about these, no, you will not talk about this. <laughs> when we're talking about coronary arteries, these are the arteries of your heart. These coronary arteries range from two millimeters in diameter to four or five millimeters in diameter. These are tiny. When a stent gets placed in one of these arteries, that stent helps open up the blood flow and it helps prevent blockages from coming back. These stents are made of chromium alloy. It's a network of metal to help open up the artery and to keep that artery open. It's important to seek medical attention immediately so that that artery blockage can be opened up and restore blood flow. The longer you wait during a heart attack, the higher chance there is of heart failure or death. A type one heart attack will most likely need a stent placement in an artery to help restore blood flow to the heart muscle. A type two heart attack, usually you'll treat the underlying cause first. What is causing that supply and demand mismatch of blood flow to the heart muscle? If that is fixed, that will usually fix the problem in some cases, those patients will need a stent to open up more blood flow down to the heart muscle as well. Once the patient is stable in the hospital for discharge, they'll go home, get a lot of aftercare, they'll follow up with a cardiologist to help prevent another heart attack from happening down the road. To learn more about recovery after a heart attack, go to the description box below and click on the link. So we've talked a lot about heart attacks. Here are some ways to help prevent it. The factors that increase your risk of having a heart attack are a high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, or if someone in your family had a heart attack. Managing your high blood pressure, your sugar, and your cholesterol, all of those things can help reduce your chances of having a heart attack. For more tips on how to keep a heart healthy diet, sign up for our heart health newsletter by clicking on the link below. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lay, and I'm a cardiologist. If you enjoyed this video on heart attacks and heart health, like and subscribe for more tips on minimizing your risk of heart attacks. See you next time.